Hey guys, Matt Guzman here, back with another video, and today is going to be about how to get the Citizenship in the Nation Merit Badge. So this is one of the ones that I completed at Roundtable, um, or at least I started it at Roundtable, and I didn't complete it there because I missed some of the meetings, but now I have finally completed it, and I have the Merit Badge. So the first requirement says to explain what Citizenship in the Nation means, and what it takes to be a good citizen of this country and then discuss the rights, duties, and obligations of a responsible and or active American citizen. So this first requirement is similar to citizenship in the world. In instead of nation, it's just switched with world. But uh, these two requirements are the are similar to each other. So it, you sh uh, the first one I did was citizenship in the world. That was with the, one of the first merit badges I got. So that link will be in the description if you want to know how to get that badge. But this is similar to that. Um, I might suggest doing citizenship in the world first just because it's a little e bit easier, but that's just my preference. So, now, number two, do two of the following. There's four options, but I'm only going to show the options that I did. Uh, the first one I did was A, visit a place that is listed or that is on the National Register of Historic Places. Tell your counselor what you learned about the landmark or site and what you found interesting about it. So. Cool thing about this is that you can actually go somewhere to learn about that place. The second option I did was 2D, and it says, Choose a national monument that interests you. Using books, brochures, the internet, and other resources, find out more about the monument. So as I was saying before with going to places, my family actually goes on these summer vacations every summer, and one of the places we went to was the Vicksburg National Military Park, and that was just recently this summer. One of the coolest things that I remember is the is the USS Cairo. It's a ship that actually sank during one of the battles and it like sank to the bottom of the river and a few years later they were actually able to fish it up out of the river. So that was pretty cool. The museum was very interesting as well. Just some other monuments. Uh, there's the Mount Rushmore. If they don't know the name they at least know that the faces of US presidents are carved into it. And the most obvious one that most people think of is the Washington Monument. I've actually been here too, but that was a long time ago. But I did 2D based off the Washington Monument. Because I actually did go there, uh, I don't know, I don't remember how long ago it was, but I did go in the museum and like figure out how it was built and stuff. It was pretty cool. Did you guys know that there's there was two periods it took to build because it actually had to be stopped during the Civil War and the construction started after it. So that's just kind of cool to know, know about it. Uh, when you choose the National Monument, you tell your counselor what you have learned and explain why the monument is important to this country's citizens. Moving on to three, this was the one that I got caught up on. Um, it says, watch the National Evening News five days in a row, or read the front page of a major daily newspaper five days in a row. So, with me, I kept accidentally forgetting to watch the news, but you don't need to actually watch a, like, news channel you could go on the news youtube channel which is what i did and watched different stories on different national issues and stuff um at that time one of the, one of the biggest national issues was the el paso shooting so that was one of them and it says to discuss the national issues learned with your counselor i discussed the el paso shooting because that was pretty big and choose one of the issues and explain how it affects you, you and your family that doesn't directly affect me, but you have to find one that has some correlation that uh, that towards your family. And that's it for three. Number four says discuss each of the following documents with your counselor, and in doing so, tell your counselor how you feel life in the United States might be different without each one. So the following documents are the Declaration of Independence, the Preamble to the Constitution, the Constitution itself, the Bill of Rights, and the amendments to the Constitution. So this one might actually take a while. This one took me the longest because um, you have to actually read them. You can't just like skim it through. I mean, unless you're like, you already, you already know about it and you're just skimming to find like the important parts. I mean, like you don't need to read the entirety of the Constitution, um, but you need to know the basic knowledge of why it exists. Because then afterwards you need to talk about how you feel life would be without it. So. Um, those are the five documents that you need to know, and uh, what would be helpful is if you actually, like, wrote notes down or something, that's what I did, uh, um, I read them, and especially for, like, the amendments, I just wrote down all the amendments, but y you need to have an understanding of what each of them means. And that's it for number four. Number five, list the six functions of government as noted in the preamble to the Constitution. 
Um, that's the one that starts off with we the people, that famous line. And then discuss with your counselor how these functions affect your family and local community. So I think there's like six to seven lines in the uh, preamble. There might be more, I'm not sure the exact count, but you need to, uh, what I, I did is I chose six lines and talked about um, those as the functions of government. So, that, I mean, that's what my counselor told us to do, so that's what I did. And it's pretty simpler that way, but if you, if you read over the preamble and you're able to understand what it, what it means, this requirement gets easier to do. Number six, with your counselor's approval, choose a speech of national historical importance. Find out about the author and tell the, your counselor about the person who gave the speech. Also, you need to explain the importance of the speech at the time it was given and tell how it applies to American citizens today. And finally, choose a sentence or two from the speech that has significant meaning to you and tell your counselor why. So there are plenty of speeches. Um, my counselor gave us uh, a lot of options. Most of them were like presidential speeches or speeches to do with like citizenship and stuff. The most probable answer to pop in your head is the Martin Luther King Jr. speech, the his I Have a Dream speech. That's what it popped into my head and that's what I chose. But it can be any speech as long as it has historical significance and you can answer those questions. All right, moving on to number seven. Name three branches of our federal government and explain to your counselor their functions. Explain how citizens are involved in each government function and for each branch of the government, explain the importance of the system of checks and balances. So checks and balances basically is when the three branches balance each other out by checking up on different strengths that each branch can offer to each other. But looking at this graph, you can see how it works and you've probably learned about it in other history or civics classes as well. All right, moving on to number eight. And surprisingly, this is actually the last requirement and also the hardest requirement because it says name your two senators of your state and the member of Congress from your congressional district. You need to write a letter about a national issue and send it to one of the elected officials sharing your view with him or her and show the letter and any response you receive to your counselor. So this is the one that um, all, the pe all the people that I've met that have done this badge, they say this is probably the most difficult part of it because you're, you're sending a letter to a senator. So that means it could be any issue that corresponds to a national scale. And as long as you're able to write a, uh, like a, I just did like f three or four paragraphs. You don't need to write an entire essay, but I mean, you should, like, it should be a good letter because you're sending it to one of the elected officials. And when you're sending the letter, you need to show it to your counselor beforehand. And hopefully if that uh, elected official you chose reads what they get sent, then you can get a response from them. Uh, I, I haven't gotten a response from my senator, but uh, I just got one of those automated messages that's saying, thank you for messaging us. But once you get that done, you're done with the merit badge. Some of the steps were difficult to do. So my counselor actually made a schedule, and this is what I'm suggesting to you guys as well. Uh, these Those dates don't, don't matter, don't pay attention to those, but the order of the requirements, that's how I did it. And if you were to follow the schedule, you're... You're, you don't need to follow the dates, but you can get it done in an orderly fashion. Thank you for watching my video. If you did enjoy it, please like the video and turn on notifications on my channel. And look up for any other videos I have in the future. Um, and if you haven't watched my Citizenship in the World Merit Badge video, that link will be in the description. And also a couple of other videos that I think might be interesting if you took this Merit Badge. So thank you for watching my video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!